Amelia Jones, a composed and dignified black woman in her early 50s, made her way through the bustling airport. It was one of those busy afternoons where everyone seemed to be rushing from one place to another. She navigated the crowd with the calm confidence of someone who had traveled countless times before. Her professional demeanor was emphasized by her well-tailored suit, and her eyes, sharp and observant, moved attentively as she approached the boarding gate for her flight. The airport was noisy, filled with the sound of announcements, chatter, and the rolling of luggage wheels, but Amelia remained unfazed, a picture of calm amidst the chaos. As she reached the boarding counter, the attendant, a young white man with a name tag that read Evan, barely glanced at her before stiffening visibly. There was something almost imperceptible in his demeanor, a flicker of discomfort that only Amelia caught. He took her boarding pass with a quick, mechanical motion and scanned it. Amelia noticed his jaw tighten, and he frowned at the screen. Without making eye contact, he muttered, Just a moment, and turned to whisper something to his colleague behind the counter. Amelia's smile faded slightly. There was something unsettling about the way he spoke, the way his eyes flickered back to her, and then quickly away as if he was avoiding her gaze. She felt a familiar tightening in her chest, a sensation she knew all too well from years of dealing with subtle, what was, and not so subtle, moments of discrimination. Keeping her face neutral, she waited as Evan continued to whisper with his colleague. Time seemed to stretch. The noise of the airport faded into the background as Amelia stood there, holding her breath, hoping this wouldn't be one of those situations. Finally, Evan returned, and the uncertainty in his eyes had hardened into something colder. I'm sorry, ma'am, but it seems there's an issue with your ticket, he said, his tone curt and detached. You can't board this flight. Amelia's eyebrows knit together in confusion. There must be some mistake, she replied, her voice measured and calm. I booked this flight weeks ago, and I checked in online earlier this morning. Everything should be fine. She pulled up the confirmation on her phone, but Evan barely glanced at it before shaking his head. I'm sorry, ma'am he repeated, a hint of impatience creeping into his voice. But you'll have to step aside. We can't allow you to board right now. She could feel the eyes of the people in the queue behind her, growing restless as they watched the exchange. A murmur rippled through the line, and Amelia knew what they were thinking. That she was causing a scene. That she was the one at fault. She inhaled deeply, forcing herself to stay calm, to keep her voice steady. I don't understand, she said. I've done everything right. I have a confirmed seat. Evan's expression remained stony, and he repeated with a tone that bordered on dismissive. Ma'am, you need to step aside. I'll have to call security if you don't comply. The threat hung in the air, and Amelia felt a flash of anger flare up inside her. She had seen this scenario play out before, felt the sting of being singled out without cause. It was clear that this wasn't about a technical error with her ticket. It was about something else entirely. But she knew better than to react emotionally. Not here. Not in front of an audience that was already forming their judgments. She had always been taught to handle herself with grace, to keep her emotions in check, especially in situations like this. Swallowing her pride, Amelia asked, Can I speak to a supervisor, please? She kept her voice firm but respectful, refusing to be intimidated. Evan's lips tightened as he looked at her, and for a moment she thought he might refuse. But instead, he nodded sharply and picked up the phone, speaking in low tones to someone on the other end. A few moments later, another staff member, an older woman with a stern expression, arrived at the counter. She glanced at Amelia with a look of skepticism before listening to Evan's explanation. Amelia waited, feeling a tight knot of tension forming in her stomach. The new woman turned to Amelia with the same detached politeness, repeating the same line about a ticket problem. It was like hitting a wall, a bureaucratic barrier designed to wear her down. Amelia's frustration grew, but she held it back, knowing that anger would only make things worse. Ma'am, please step aside, the supervisor said, her tone leaving no room for discussion. We need to resolve this issue away from the gate. Amelia was left with no choice but to move away, aware of the curious stares following her. 
a security guard, alerted by the growing tension, had begun to make his way toward them. She stepped aside, feeling a familiar sense of injustice tightening around her, like a noose. She watched as passengers moved past her, oblivious to her struggle, and she could see it in their eyes. The quick, judgmental glances. There's another one, those eyes seemed to say. Another person who couldn't follow the rules. Amelia knew that if she reacted now, the narrative would shift against her completely. So she took a deep breath, allowing herself a moment to collect her thoughts. Standing there, marginalized and unfairly treated, she realized that this was a moment of choice. She could walk away and accept their judgment, or she could stand her ground, not just for herself, but for everyone who had ever faced the same kind of prejudice. She knew that whatever happened next, she would need to be smart, careful, and above all, true to herself. Amelia decided to stay calm, determined not to give them any excuse to cast her as the aggressor. She straightened her back, her expression set with quiet resolve. The weight of countless moments like this accumulated over a lifetime, settled heavily on her shoulders. This was just another battle in a war she had been fighting for as long as she could remember, and she was ready to face it with the dignity she knew it demanded. Duttis. Amelia stood to the side, watching passengers board the plane she was being denied access to. The supervisor and Evan exchanged tense whispers. Her frustration simmered, but she remained outwardly composed. A few minutes later, two security guards approached. One of them, tall and broad-shouldered, spoke first. Ma'am, we've been informed that there's an issue with your ticket, he said, his tone formal but unyielding. It was clear he was already siding with the airport staff, assuming she was the problem. Amelia could feel the judgment in his eyes, a silent confirmation of what she suspected. They had made up their minds long before speaking to her. I don't understand, she said, keeping her voice steady. I have a confirmed seat on this flight. I've provided my identification and my boarding pass. Why am I being singled out? The second guard, a younger man with a softer expression, hesitated. He seemed less certain, as if sensing that there was more to the situation than what he had been told. But the first guard remained firm, his expression hardening, as he said, We're just following protocol, ma'am. Please cooperate and step away from the boarding area. Amelia glanced at the line of passengers still watching her, their curiosity mixed with irritation. She could see it in their faces, a desire for her to just go away, to not cause a scene. But she wasn't causing the scene. The scene was being imposed upon her. Her voice dropped to a lower, more urgent tone. I've been treated differently from the moment I walked up to that counter, and I need to understand why. The supervisor, who had been hovering nearby, intervened again. Ma'am, we have policies to follow, and your behavior is becoming disruptive. Her tone was cold, final, as if daring Amelia to push back. Amelia's patience was wearing thin, but she knew that giving in to anger would only confirm their worst assumptions. She looked directly at the younger guard, hoping to find some semblance of fairness. I'm not being disruptive, she said firmly. I'm asking for clarity. I've complied with every request, and yet I'm being treated as if I've done something wrong. The younger guard's gaze faltered, but his colleague's resolve remained unshaken. If you don't step back he said, raising his voice slightly. We will have to remove you from this area. Amelia felt the weight of the moment pressing down on her, but she refused to step back. She had been pushed to the edge, humiliated in front of strangers, and denied a simple explanation. She had no intention of retreating. With a calm, deliberate motion, she reached into her bag, feeling the texture of something familiar under her fingertips. The atmosphere around them was tense, the silence stretching as the crowd waited for what she would do next. She could see the unease in their faces, the suspicion, and she knew that the next move was crucial. Her heartbeat quickened, but she kept her hand steady. There was no turning back now. Amelia's fingers closed around the cold metal of her badge. With a steady hand, she pulled it out of her bag and held it up for everyone to see. The small, gold emblem of the U.S. Marshal Service caught the overhead lights, gleaming brightly against the tension-filled backdrop of the boarding gate. 
For a moment, it felt as if the entire airport had gone silent and all eyes were on her. She saw the shock flicker across the faces of the security guards, the supervisor, and especially Evan, whose expression shifted from defiance to sudden panic. I am a federal marshal, Amelia said, her voice calm and authoritative, the weight of her authority resonating in each word. I have a job to do, and I expect to be treated with the same respect and dignity as any other passenger in this airport. The supervisor's face paled. Her eyes widened as she took in the badge, clearly not expecting this turn of events. She opened her mouth to respond, but no words came out. Evan's jaw dropped, his face drained of color, and he took a step back, clearly realizing the gravity of his mistake. The younger security guard looked stunned, caught off guard by the revelation, while his partner, previously so self-assured, now seemed unsure of what to do next. Amelia did not lower her badge. Instead, she held it up, almost daring them to challenge her, now that they knew who she was. The silence stretched, heavy with the realization of what had just happened, and she could see the power dynamics shift right before her eyes. The crowd that had been so quick to judge her now seemed to reconsider, their murmurs growing louder as they took in the scene unfolding before them. One of the guards finally cleared his throat, his voice hesitant. We... we weren't aware, ma'am, he stammered, his previous confidence replaced by uncertainty. We were just following standard procedures. Were you? Amelia assessed, her tone cutting through the tension like a knife. She didn't raise her voice, but each word was clear and precise, echoing across the terminal. Or were you following assumptions based on nothing more than the color of my skin? The supervisor, finally finding her voice, stammered an apology. I, I'm sorry, ma'am. This is clearly a misunderstanding. Please, let me get my manager so we can clear this up. There's no need, Amelia said, lowering the badge but not the force in her gaze. What I want is an acknowledgement that I was treated unfairly, singled out, and humiliated in front of all these people without justification. I want to know why my presence here was seen as a threat. Her words hung in the air, and the supervisor's eyes darted nervously from Amelia to the crowd that was now openly watching, many of them filming the scene with their phones. Ayavon looked like he wanted to disappear, his face a mixture of embarrassment and fear. The younger guard stepped back, his eyes downcast, while his partner swallowed hard, the fight visibly draining out of him. For the first time, the power was firmly in Amelia's hands, and she knew it. She didn't need to raise her voice or make threats. The truth of what had happened was plain for everyone to see. She had exposed their biases, not through anger, but through the undeniable authority of her position and the calmness of her response. Please accept our apologies, ma'am, the supervisor said finally, her voice barely above a whisper. We... We'll make sure this doesn't happen again. Amelia looked at her for a long moment, then nodded slowly. She knew that the apology, however sincere it sounded now, was a reaction to her badge, not to the unfair treatment she had endured. But it was enough, for now. With a quiet dignity, she slipped the badge back into her bag and said, I expect that it won't. Turning away from the stunned faces of the staff, she walked back toward the gate, each step deliberate and confident, a sense of vindication coursing through her. The crowd parted as she moved forward, their expressions shifting from curiosity to respect. She could feel the weight of what had just happened settling in, not just for her, but for everyone who had witnessed it. Dot Amelia returned to the boarding area, her badge now safely tucked back into her bag, but the impact of its revelation still echoing throughout the terminal. The crowd that had watched with judgment and curiosity now seemed to regard her with a mixture of admiration and shame. A few of them, perhaps embarrassed by their earlier assumptions, looked away, while others offered her nods of respect. The tension that had filled the air moments before had dissipated, replaced by a heavy silence that lingered with the realization of what had just occurred. As she approached the gate, the senior manager of the airline arrived, a middle-aged man in a crisp suit, 
clearly briefed on the situation. He moved quickly to intercept her, his face flushed with concern. Miss Jones, I want to personally apologize for everything that just happened. He began, his voice sincere but strained. I assure you, this is not how we treat our passengers, and I am deeply sorry for the way you were singled out. Amelia listened, arms crossed over her chest, her face unreadable. She had heard apologies before, many times, in moments when people were forced to confront their own biases. She knew that this apology was as much about damage control as it was about remorse. Still, she gave him a chance to finish. We are going to make this right, he continued, gesturing toward the still nervous staff behind the counter. Please allow us to upgrade you to first class for the inconvenience, and I will personally make sure that those responsible are properly retrained to prevent anything like this from happening again. Amelia's eyes softened just a little. She appreciated the gesture, knowing that a first-class seat was a symbolic acknowledgement, if nothing else. But she also knew that no upgrade could erase the deeper issue that had been exposed. It wasn't about the class of her seat. It was about dignity, respect, and the long-standing struggle she had faced her entire life. The subtle and not-so-subtle ways people were judged based on their appearance, their race, their mere presence. Thank you, she said calmly. I'll accept the upgrade, but more importantly, I want you to understand why this happened in the first place. I was treated differently from the moment I approached that counter, and I don't want this to be about one isolated incident. This needs to be about how you handle every passenger, regardless of who they are or what they look like. The manager nodded earnestly. I understand, Miss Jones, and I promise we will do better. Amelia looked at him for a moment, weighing his words. She wanted to believe him, to hope that this incident would be a turning point, not just a momentary fix. I hope you will, she said quietly, her tone both firm and forgiving, because the next person in my situation might not have a badge to prove they deserve respect. With that, she accepted the new boarding pass, nodded briefly to the now silent staff behind the counter, and walked down the jet bridge. Her back was straight, her steps sure, and she felt a deep sense of accomplishment, not because she had won, but because she had stood her ground with dignity and forced them to see her as more than what they had assumed. As she settled into her first-class seat, the hum of the engines filling the cabin, she allowed herself a moment to reflect. This wasn't the first time she had faced this kind of discrimination, and it probably wouldn't be the last, but she had shown that dignity, patience, and strength could turn a moment of injustice into a lesson for all to witness. She hoped that some of the faces in the terminal had learned something, that maybe, just maybe, this moment would resonate beyond her small victory. As the plane taxied down the runway and lifted into the sky, Amelia glanced out the window, the world below growing smaller with each passing second. She allowed herself a quiet, satisfied smile, knowing she had not only defended her own honor, but also sent a message that rippled far beyond that airport. She closed her eyes, feeling a sense of peace wash over her, and thought of all those who had fought similar battles before her. Today, in her own way, she had honored them all, and somewhere, deep inside, she knew that her story would be told and retold, not just because of what she had done, but because she had done it without losing her integrity or sense of self. She had remained true to who she was, and in the end, that was the greatest victory of all.